Hey guys, Jakuto here, and today I am taking a gander and looking at what Solas's plans could entail within Dragon Age 4. The plans themselves I'm going to call the Elf Apocalypse. We've got quite a lot of theories within this video, so buckle up and put those speculation caps on. Also, spoilers, so beware. So before we look forward in terms of what Solas's plans may entail, I'm quickly going to recap all of the events that have been instrumental for Solas to seek the return of the Elven Kingdom, just so we're all on the same page. So, leaving no stone unturned, it's essentially like this. Solas was one of the elven gods called the Evanurus. The Evanurus ruled over the elven kingdom and referred to themselves as a pantheon, basically a hierarchy. The other Evanurus killed Solas's closest friend, Mafal. Mafal, whom is possessing Flameth, at least she was before Solas kind of absorbed all of her power. In an act to avenge Mafal, Solas created the veil and banished the other Evanurus. But what Solas didn't know is that by creating the veil, it also cut the elves off from their magic and magic was everything to them, and it was used in all things, from buildings to their very own language. Having created the veil, this took a lot of power from Solas, and he fell into a deep sleep. But when he awoke, it was a highly advanced civilization that he witnessed, turned into a near stone aged one, in his opinion. He had seen the elven kingdom at its greatest, and now waking up, he had seen them at their very knees, losing so much of their magic and technology. They couldn't even speak the same complexities as they had once before. So because of this, Solas lets the Venatori find his orb so that Corypheus can unlock it and Solas can use the power afterwards to destroy the veil and let the elves become immortal once again. However, the Inquisitor messes up this plan and Corypheus becomes immortal via taint and these were two things that Solas did not expect. So Solas then decided to help the Inquisition so that they could then stop Corypheus. After all, Solas did cause the whole Corypheus situation. But the orb broke in the battle and Solas took off and stole the power of Mephi from Morrigan's mom to regain his strength. Two years later, some of Solas's spies found out about the Dragon Breath, and so they lured the Cunari to the Winter Palace so the Inquisitor could stop them. Solas then explained his plans to the Inquisitor after the Inquisitor stops the Cunari Rebellion. And now, Solas wants to destroy the very veil and bring back his elven people to prominence regardless of other life. It is this period in which Dragon Age 4 will happen. So first of all, with this history being said, Solas intends on destroying the veil, this being in an attempt to restore the elven kingdom to what it once was. But what is the veil? Well, the veil is a magical barrier that Solas created. It segregates the Fade Realm and the province of Fadis. Half a dozen terrible things only exist because of the veil. Like demonic possession, spirits getting warped, destroyed when forced to the physical world, tranquility, the loss of elven immortality, mass elf enslavement, the mage and templar war, and even arch demons. Destroying the veil itself would destroy the many foundations of man, dwarves, cunari, and the elves that live in the dragon age. When Solas created the veil, it eradicated all foundations of the elven kingdom because they built their entire empire upon this free-flowing connection to the very source of magic. Establishing that connection again to the Fade, with no barrier protecting Fadus, could destroy the world as we know it. Even if the Veil's destruction doesn't, the Elven Kingdoms would be restored and the Elves would be unstoppable, rising to become leaders of Fadus once again using their immortality and magic abilities. So basically, if the Veil is destroyed, the people of Fadus are bent over barrel one way or the other. So we know why Solas wants to return the Elven Kingdoms to their full glory, but I want to talk about Solas's entire ethos, the characteristics of this Elven God. You see, Solas, at least to me, is not clinically evil. He's antagonistic, but his reasoning is well understood. He's not a cliche supervillain who just wants to take over the world. No, Solas cares about his people, his people who once lived better lives. One of Solas's main attributes is not just being a powerful mage. Of course, we all know how powerful he actually is, but I think one of his true characteristics is his intelligence, his crafty mind. The entire non-DLC plot of Dragon Age Inquisition is just one of the Dreadwolf's many schemes. This is in order for the Dreadwolf's plan in the future to actually work. He tricked Corypheus into unlocking the power of Solas's orb, and then he decided to find the Inquisition as he knew the army would succeed in the battle against the Magister. It was unfortunate for Solas, 
Solas that his orb was destroyed within this very battle. So Solas's entire ethos is not about vengeance or deliberate genocide, he wants what's best for his people. He is awoken from a deep sleep and now witnesses his entire race under complete turmoil. When they used to be the most powerful entities on the planet, now they're nothing but travellers with slave markings reminding them of the past, or servants tread like dogs in the cities. His entire ideology is to rescue the elven race once again, this time by destroying the very thing that he once created. And with the Dread Wolves' revelations to the Inquisitor about his plan to then destroy the Vale, I think that this is more of a cocky, arrogant approach to show the Inquisitor that our entire Inquisition army was just a crafty scheme that he set in motion. This being to show that if the Vale does eventually get destroyed, then the Inquisitor actually had a role to play within its very destruction. It's kind of like a, oh, you see that Vale that got destroyed? Yeah, you kinda helped with that Inquisitor. Moving on from his ethos, we know that he wants to destroy the Vale, and we know what he's planning, generally, but what we don't know is how. How will he go about destroying the Vale? Originally, he was going to use the orb that he gave to Corypheus, Corypheus having unlocked its power. After the Inquisitor killed Corypheus, Solas intended on using this power within the orb to then rip open the Vale. However, obviously the orb got destroyed. But Solas mentioned within Inquisition, just after Haven, that the orbs themselves come as a set, so there is a second orb out there. So he may be on the hunt for this second orb, but we are actually going to Tevinta. So what if we find ourselves going to the exact location in which the Seven Magisters entered the Golden City within the Chantry Tale? This location being the best place because it's already been ripped once. Then again, if we go by that idea, what if Solas returns to Skyhold and rip opens the Veil here? This place has a significant history with Solas and it's got a very deep connection to magic. I feel that maybe in Dragon Age 4, if this were to occur, we would visit Skyhold again and witness our Inquisitor fighting against Solas. But moving on, we still have a lot of things to consider than just Solas creating an elven rebellion. There are a few more key plot point factors that I believe will affect Dragon Age 4 greatly, all involving Solas in some way. The first main plot point factor is the Evanuris. So if Solas is to rip open the veil, then the original elven mages that claim themselves as elven gods will inevitably return to Fadis. Now whether they're still sane after being locked up for centuries is another topic, but surely the majority of these mages will be seeking some revenge towards the Dread Wolf. I imagine some of the Pantheon will see it as a just punishment, you know, after murdering Mafal, and then they may work with Solas and help restore what once was. I also imagine that many of the Pantheon would rather side with Solas and engage with the other rivaled races of Fadus. However, I do foresee that within the next Dragon Age game, I think that we will definitely get a new turned leaf Evanurus mage as a party companion, boarding our fight against Solas. Even still, the Evanurus will play a large part in the next game. I imagine Solas will be individually judging each and every one of them for their crimes in the old times as the Dread Wolf takes over the Elven Pantheon and declares himself at the top, replacing what once was Mafal's role. The second major factor that we have to consider is the Blight, or the two remaining Archdemons and however many Magisters. I've been talking a lot about the Blight recently, the entire Magisters, the returning old gods. We know that Razakel and Lusikan are still sleeping in the Fade. These two remaining Archdemons, according to the Chantry, have been captured by the Maker. Now there's been a lot of foreshadowing towards the next Blight. We have Morrigan's son, who has been experiencing nightmares, which refers to sensing an old god. Now take that as you will, but I think breaking the very borders between Fadus and the Fade would awake not one, but potentially two old gods. I'll explain this more at the end, but I believe that Solas will actually succeed at destroying the Vale, and I think that in either Dragon Age 4 or potentially Dragon Age 5, we will be experiencing two Blights that will cause massive war and chaos upon Fadus, especially with other rivaling factions. With the many mysteries of the old dragons, we've also got their given Magister. I went thoroughly into them in one of my videos, which you should totally check out, but these Tevinta kinsmen are suspected to still be alive with two potential blights returning. I also foresee the remaining Magisters to take charge too, just bringing even more chaos to Fadus. The next major factor that we need to consider is the Cunari army. Solas tricked them in the Trespasser DLC. They are coming for blood. The Cune is already at war with Tevinta. I think it's safe to say that we'll definitely encounter many Cunari in the next Dragon Age game. I think that Solas's elven rebellion will cause a large fuss with every given nation in Fadus. That our new protagonist may be given a choice to side with the Cunari or Tevinta Imperial. 
Imperium. Like a Quarian or Geth choice in Mass Effect 3, but with no peace option. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, correct? In any case, this would be an excuse for us to see Sten from Dragon Age Origins as the new Arashok. I think that that would be sick. And then the final major key factor that we need to consider is the Magisterium of the Tevinter Imperium. We're going to Tevinter. I think that the Magisterium will be an exemplary factor within this tumultuous period. We already know that Dorian Pavis is joining the Magisterium. We'll be seeing him again. And I think we're going to have to side with either the bloodthirsty mages of the Magisterium or the bulky brutes of the Kune. Either way, I don't trust any of them. I just know that there's going to be a lot of bloodshed. So pressing forward, will Solas actually succeed? I think that Solas will succeed in terms of destroying the very veil. As previously mentioned, this being as a means for the franchise to unravel many mysteries that surround the games, breaking the very veil would bring Fadus and the Fade together once again. We'd be able to uncover the mysteries of the Maker. Does he exist? Is he still there? Or has he been tainted into a massive archdemon? I also think that having the veil destroyed allows for all of the villains and antagonists to finally appear together, bringing a massive battle and an end to the Dragon Age. I feel that Solas will break the veil within three quarters of the plot of Dragon Age 4, and our new protagonist will witness the bulk of that, and they will catch Solas and decide what to do with him, but it will have been too late for the veil. And with the world collapsed, I think that Dragon Age 5 would be about a massive conflicted war between every antagonist to date. And I think that the story would be about creating the best army to rival every antagonist, bringing back plenty of the previous party heroes that we loved and the actual protagonists like Hawk, the Inquisitor and the other ones that will be in Dragon Age 4. This would then end the Dragon Age time period and bring on a new age. We do know that Dragon Age has already been planned as a saga. If you have a physical copy of Dragon Age Origins, look at the back and read the blurb. We know that there is a narrative for five games. However, to conclude, a lot of people think that we'll reach Solas just in time and the veil may remain. They think that the player will have the option to either let Solas go on with his plan or kill him and stop the veil from ripping apart. I don't see this happening just for the preservation and the future of the franchise. I see Dragon Age 5 as an all out war. If Solas didn't destroy the veil, then I wonder what other direction the franchise would then go in. I just feel that this destruction of the veil would allow so many questions to be answered and without the Veil's destruction, I'm curious towards how those questions would then be answered and where the narrative would then go on from just killing Solas and not allowing his plan to happen. In any case, you know my opinion. I want yours. Do you think Solas will destroy the very Veil? What about these other factions? Will we side with the Kune or the Imperium? What do you think about all this? I want to know all of your opinions, guys. But for all your things, Bioware, Dragon Age 4, Mass Effect's anticipated future, Anthem and any other IPs I may steer myself into, well, you're already in the right place. But until the next one, I have been Jackdaw and I should go.